team up is Dr. Miyazaki uh, and his team member, Achaya. And uh, they're going to talk about one of the projects that they've had a lot of success in. Uh, but I want to do the intro first. <clears throat> so Dr. Miyazaki, actually the head of uh, AI engineering lab at uh, Panasonic CCS, Cold Chain Systems, one of many of the holding companies uh, at Panasonic. And uh, he, his group actually looks at a very broad area of like uh, fault detection, uh, forecasting, and and even like, you know, uh, extending uh, equipment life and so on. And um, Dr. Miyazaki actually got his uh, education at uh, Carnegie Mellon as well and his PhD from Tokyo University, one of the two prestigious universities in Japan. The other being Kyoto, which is where Rachaya is from. <laughs> and Rachaya is actually a data science scientist in uh, uh, Miyazaki's group. And she actually focuses very much on the fault prediction problem that they will talk about yeah, today. Yeah, and uh, uh, without much ado, I would love to introduce both of them to come up and uh, run the talk. Okay. Well, um, I am Rachaya from Panasonic, and today I'll uh, um, am pressured. Um, pleasure to share with you about our development of cold chain predictive maintenance system um, by combining ML and human expertise. So here is a collaboration work with um, Atomatic. Yeah, and so the overview, um, the agenda of today's um, presentation would be um, first I will give um, talk on the background of what is um, cold chain equipment and um, why we need predictive maintenance for those systems and then um, describe on our purpose, um, our problem statements and the work, and our implementation, and finally concludes what we have achieved with um, our combined, uh, our purpose system. So, oh, maybe um, the conversion is a bit, a bit weird, but yeah, these are um, cold chain equipment. Um, we are focusing about on our um, problems here. So it's um, the, co uh, the equipment that is in common supermarkets and convenience stores. Um, there are a lot of types um, such as refrigerators and showcases. And in um, each refrigerator or showcases also have a um, difference of types. And um, such as um, separated types where um, the heat exchanger unit was um, is exactly um, refrigerators connecting outside by the refrigerant pipe, and the build the showcase with built-in pipe, um, built-in type which is uh, the showcases that um, has a unit um, heat exchanger unit within itself. So the mechanism of these equipments are um, completely um, I would say different. So um, we. In order to build a model, we um, already um, we need a lot of um, human um, expertise um, in order to help us to um, solve um, any problems that we have. So uh, then I will be. I would like to just mention a little bit on why we need a predictive maintenance for um, these cold chain equipment. So um, for reactive maintenance, um, conventionally. Um, we only aware that there is any anomaly circumstance of the equipment when um, the alarms of the equipment goes off. Then um, the stores needs to contact our call center, and the company sends the engineer to inspect what's going on, um, and they will look into what they can do in to to, main, to do the maintenance. So it. We take long times until uh, the inspection and the maintenance has been done, and it will take um, it will cost the unplanned out time to the stores. And um, the products in these equipments are really temperature sensitive, so we don't want to break that um, cold chain um, thing. So, for if we have predictive maintenance, our um, models can um, detect anomaly um, at early stage, and also. Um, Engineers can inspect um, and monitor the conditions of those equipment um, remotely, and if necessary, they can go to the stores for maintenance. So the um, the perfect situation is that an equipment operated um, without any disruptions, so we can save unplanned out time um, and also reserve quality of food products and save unnecessary costs um, in maintenance. 
Okay. So um, here is the problem statement. Um, with the problems, um, as well as um, any other industrial AI, so um, which is uh, we don't have um, the data, much, much more data at the beginning to start um, building the model with. And in our case is that um, we don't have enough um, failure label data, um, which is specific term failure label data, so we can construct the supervised learning models um, for specifically for each failure types. And even um, we can um, develop the anomaly detection system based on um, unsupervised learning. Um, those models cannot, um, I would say, cannot um, the detect causes of failures that um, exactly what um, the operations engineer would would be would like um, to know. So they still um, have. Um, needs to needs the operations engineers to analyze the data, and it also cause the delay in maintenance. So our approach here is that we um, combine the system um, by um, combining um, machine learning based anomaly detection to analyze um, to detect the anomalous signs of equipment at early stage with um, the knowledge based. Um, failure diagnosis model to analyze the causes of failure using machine know-how from our um, machine expertise. And roughly about objectives is that we want um, to reduce the operation workload from um, monitoring um, all of the equipment's conditions um, daily by 80%. And also we want to increase um, the prediction um, precision um, by combining um, human expertise, we aim to um, improve the accuracy of, of um, the failure um, detection by 20%. So um, the system overview here is that um, we firstly collect the data from um, the stores, um, which is a refrigerator showcase and so on, to um, our data set. And then we run anomaly detection and failure diagnosis um, in parallel. And um, we scored um, those results and then show on the web application. And um, our engineers will check the app web application and then send the feedbacks um, back to um, our database for um, model improvement. So um, here, these. Um, the framework here is um, implemented by um, Human First AI, which is also um, developed by Atomatic. So it um, contains the modulars and packages that allows um, the integration of um, rule-based models to um, AI system. Yeah. Um, so I will would like to talk about um, anomaly detection and failure diagnosis in detail. So our um, failure that, um, no, anomaly detection models, um, firstly, um, previously was based on um, self-normalizing neural networks. So we um, interpret the problems into um, several um, SNN here, and then um, calculate non-normally abnormally score for um, with the reconstruction error of those um, SNN um, here. So, um, firstly, at, at the beginning, our um, this approach of, of our model contains um, a lot of um, numbers of models, even though it has high accuracy, but um, it's sometimes um, hard for model management and also costs um, high computation and operating costs. So, um, next we come up with um, VAE best with each um, varia variational autoencoder. Um, instead of um, having these, um, let's say, um, 10 um, models, we can um, reduce the number of model by um, into one autoencoder here. So um, it is easy for model management and um, can lower the operation, operating costs. And um, by, however, um, in order to um, develop um, VAE-based model at the beginning, it's quite um, 
hard, um, and we don't we have no ideas like which um, features that we are going to um, choose for the model. So we um, need um, to like work closely with um, the our engineers and. Um, we analyzed um, the causes that affecting um, VAE performance to drop. And I list the three examples here. The first one is that um, since we have lots of um, equipment type variation, so um, the structural and mechanisms of um, these equipment types are completely different. So the variation, um, so it causes the variation of um, sensor distribution. So um, we, our approach is we split the model for those um, different equipment type. And secondly, um, for uses variation, for example, same maybe same type of um, showcases, but um, we use for different purposes, such as uh, refrigerating and freezing. So we need to um, do pre-process those sensor data um, and subtracting with um, the setting values. And then lastly is seasonal variation. Um, because in Japan, there are um, um, the temperature goes really extreme in summer and then um, the winters also, um, the summers also, um, in winter, or the temperature also drop. So um, the performance of the models for refrigerators um, usually drops within summer. So we split the model for those data points with um, different operating conditions. And as a result, we are able to um, detect 69% of the um, historical failure cases that the previous model or the model um, before improvement cannot detect. And secondly um, is failure diagnosis, which is a knowledge-based model. Um, the input is um, the sensor data, a one-day period of sensor data, and output is um, candidate causes of failure. So um, in failure diagnosis, we encode um, the machine expertise, um, such as um, the know-how from specification manual, um, experimental data, expert experiences, and also operation know-how into a, um, a series of rule-based um, models, logics. And if the sensor data um, satisfy those, um, those thresholds, then it outputs um, causes of failures. So um, each failure diagnosis um, built specifically for um, each um, type of failure. For example, here, um, the show for showcases, um, we have the examples as um, frost formation, FO disturbance, and temperature and sensor abnormality. And also for um, refrigerators, we have um, maybe in water abnormality, or condenser falling, and so on. So um, for failure diagnosis, we also um, improve the performance um, of the model um, from time to time as well after model construction. So we regularly do the evaluation and um, get expert feedbacks and um, adjust the algorithm or adjust our rules time by time. So for example, um, um, I've written here is a low pressure sensors abnormality rules for refrigerators. For, um, at first, we found that the false positive number is quite high at 62%. And after we do the evaluation, we um, work closely with our um, engineer, ex operation engineer teams. Then we um, adjust the threshold to reduce um, false positive number. And finally, um, do the evaluation again, and um, they um, like suggest us to add um, the information of refrigerant load required by the refrigerators. Then uh, we successfully. Um, reduced um, the number of false positives to 0%. Yeah, and these are the, um, maybe the um, simple um, illustration or the simple um, examples of um, our web application that our um, operation engineers currently use. So um, daily, the number of um, the list of equipment uh, shown in the web application. Um, it will be shown only um, the equipment that was detected by our model and with the anomaly scores and also um, the failure, failure types. Um, and 
they can see um, the raw sensor data in, in, the, in the details page. So with using these um, operations engineers can prioritize their work um, of which um, equipments they're going to um, inspect and which equipments that uh, maybe can wait later. And yeah, the conclusion is um, with the feedback of our uh, operation, our operation engineers um, be able to um, reduce the workload daily by 69%, uh, by 89%, um, by just um, focusing on the equipments that was detected as anomaly by the model and, form and performance enhancement. Um, compared with using anomaly detection alone, um, the integration of failure diagnosis, um, the human expertise also increased the precision of the predict, um, prediction and also reduced um, false positive cases as well. Yeah, and here's the, con um, the conclusion of our achievement. And for further improvement, um, we are planning to improve the robustness of uh, failure diagnosis algorithm since um, currently it's still um, specifically on um, um, failure types. So, yeah. So if we have um, enough data, um, in the future, so um, we would like to develop the model, which is ml uh, failure analysis as well. Yeah, so that's all for the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. That was an excellent, um, you know, sharing of information and of all the work that was done. So I'll open it up for questions, if people have. Otherwise, I have a question. <laughs> I'll, I'll lead with that question. Um, so, Rajay, uh, of course, I have the context, but um, did we never really talked about how the human experts and the operational engineers actually uh, shared their knowledge and how they saw the system when they sort of really say, is this a threat to my job? Is this going to help me? Maybe you can share some of that, I think, when we worked on that. Oh yeah. So before, so before um, the these um, are in um, we before the the deployment of the system, um, the operations engineers um, um, they maybe struggled of um, monitoring the the equipment's conditions. Um, because there are large amounts of equipment um, equipments in the store, and there are like large amounts of stores that we have um, in in our services. So, um, um, checking every um, equipment's condition is um, near impossible. And um, after um, doing starting this project and um, used um, the tools that. Um, we have developed so um, they can like easily um, have a better understanding on um, like the the daily the daily conditions and also um, yeah so they can work like um, so how to say it? so they can um, work with confidence um, with um, to make sure that um, so this um, the, the, the equipment um, also like has um, failures the, the the actual failures that they thought um, so the equip the models our models also support um, their thinking and um, also the feedback their their feedback also keeps um, um, improving the the predict, um, the the performance of the models as well. So I, I would like to ask, why do we have to do stay up detection, abnormally detection, and then the fall detection? Okay. And so and, and and where the knowledge should be applied in each of the case. Okay. Yeah. Actually, <clears throat> the knowledge from um, I would say the knowledge from human expertise um, is currently applies on both. Um, on both models, um, both sides, both um, sides, which is um, both um, anomaly detection and failure diagnosis. In anomaly detection, um, 
at first, um, the, 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 the intentions of developing an early detection is that um, we want to detect, um, we want to know is there any um, anomaly as, or is there any possibility of the anomaly to, to occur um, in, for the equipment. So, um, so it's just, um, so, um, so we, we have, um, we use probability and then um, like we suggest, oh, this, this equipment A has a probability of um, going to break down, but um, anomaly detection models cannot um, specifically um, say that um, like which, which of the failure types or what is the root cause of the failure. So um, we still need um, the operations engineer to like, like work on the sensors, yeah. So that is the intuition that why we add um, failure diagnosis into the system. So um, we use their um, um, know-how and then um, transfer and encode it as a model so it can like um, determine um, without using, um, without them to like um, analyze the model one by one. So I would say, um, yeah, the knowledge has been um, used in, in both model. Yeah. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, but uh, from your presentation, uh, you have mentioned some rule very um, abstract, like um, very low. And it, it, that is also the very nature from the human experts as well, because that is um, curated from their many years of inspiration that they can only give you a feeling of when they uh, approach, when they encounter this certain uh, condition, they have a feeling that certain type of value will be something like this or like this. Uh, so how can you, what's your the process or step to identify exactly with the value you need to set a threshold for the, for, for the model? Oh, could, could you repeat the, uh, okay. the last sure. question? So uh, I mean that um, the, 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 the expert knowledge can vary very, very much, right? Like only very low, but uh, for the model to learn or to assess something that when you say that you minus or plus a, a, another setting value, exactly how you, can you define the exact value for 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 for, for the for the model, the exact setting values? Oh, the setting values. Yes. So, um, is it um, in the pre-processing part? Is that? Yes. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, the intuition is that um, we want to. Um, it's just the process of the um, the sensor um, pre-processing. I guess. Um, so. Yeah, because we have um, different, um, we have large variation of usage, so um, it's so the yeah the the pre-processing. Just sorry, I, I don't understand um, the question. This again. Maybe we can take that offline. Uh, okay, maybe but yeah, we can discuss later. Okay, then thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Doctor Sam. Yeah.